Hi, my name is Per Jung, I'm from Sweden and I'm an ATPL integrated student here at Baltic Aviation Academy. We know that you have a lot of questions and I'm here today to answer some of them. This is not possible, of course, but it would be fun to try in a simulator because in a 100 knot crosswind, the nose of the aircraft would point too much into the wind for a landing to be made. The Airbus 320 has a maximum crosswind component of 33 knots and 29 knots in takeoff and 10 knots tailwind and gusts up to 38 knots has been demonstrated. Engine anti-ice should be turned on if the total air temperature is 10 degrees or below and if visible moisture is present. The engine bleeds steals air from the engines and reduces the engine performance. That is why you sometimes turn off the engine bleeds uh, when you want uh, maximum takeoff performance. But if that is the case, you should use the APU to handle the cabin pressure. Bleed air is basically very hot air, 200 to 250 degrees. This is valuable for the aircraft in two aspects. One is high temperature and the other is high pressure. With pressure we can pressurize the cabin and with hot air we can use the anti-icing systems and control the air conditioning system. Hot bleed air is transferred to the wings and the, the engine, the nose cowling, and to the nose cone and melts any ice that is present. The wing anti-ice has a bigger impact on the performance so the Boeing 737 automatically turns off the wing anti-ice in the takeoff to have sufficient thrust. The top of the scent is the calculated transition from the cruise phase in the flight to the descent phase. So how do we know when to start our descent? Well, one method is to take the amount of feet we want to descend and multiply it by 3. For example, if we are at 35,000 feet, we will multiply 35 with 3 and we will get 105 nautical miles and then we will add 5 to 10 nautical miles just to be safe. So, our answer is 110 nautical miles from our destination. But it is mostly for double checking so that your FMC is calculating the right top of descent because it will calculate with more precision with winds and optimum speeds. Of course we can, but we need a higher VRF speed or approach reference speed. With flaps we can acquire a lower stall speed but with a trade of drag which makes us able to descend uh, but not pick up too much speed. Sluts will increase the M crit which translates into that we can fly with a higher angle of attack before uh, we stall and uh, it delays the flow separation over the wing, which makes the wing stall. Okay, so here we are on the final. We're going to do a flap-up landing. Our altitude is uh, 1,900 feet. And our approach speed, or VRF, is 205 knots. Our decision height is 400 feet. We have our outer brakes set to maximum. This is a long runway, so this won't be a problem. One thousand. Check. We are 
approaching 700 feet. 500. Check. Good speed. We are good on the guide path. Minimums. Continue. Stable. 300. Accelerating, auto brakes operating, 70 knots, and manual braking. And we have stopped. You set the parking brake. Okay, so we have brakes off. Please turn on the brake fan. All right, this is pretty much how you do a flap-up landing. We had a speed of 205 knots, which is uh, considerably higher than we are used to. But fortunately, it was a long runway, so there's no problem. Here we are at the Bristol Airport runway 07 left and we are going to fly a DME arc approach we have a distance of 10 nautical miles from the VOR and uh, we cannot deviate plus minus one nautical mile uh, we will follow this arc until we reach our final approach track 081 degrees and we will turn to final and uh, land on 07 left Ready? Ready. Take off. Setting thrust. On your flex, 40 degrees. Thrust check. Check. Counter right knots. Check. Positive rate. Gear up. Gear up. Flaps up. Flaps speed. Flaps up. Take a check. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. Retracted. Packs. On. Checklist completed. Thanks. We set the outer brake to low setting. Outer brake low. Turn left. 270. Okay, so right now we are intercepting the DME arc. We should aim for a distance of 10. So if the DME is increasing, we have to turn more to the left. And if it decreases, we have to fly straight for a while or turn slightly to the right. Well, 
so now we are flying along the DME arc. We have a distance of 9.5. So right now we should uh, continue straight for a while. And uh, when the distance increases, we have to turn further left. For sales up. Pulling speed. Two one zero knots. They said two thousand uh, feet and uh, minus seven hundred feet per minute. Two thousand set. Minus seven hundred vertical speed set. Flaps one, please. Flaps one, speed check. Speed one, nine or zero. Okay, distance is now 10.3, so we should continue to turn left. So this is uh, our final track will be 081 degrees, so when this needle lines up with this one, we uh, will be on our final approach track. Okay, the distance is 10.1, like 2,000 feet. Flaps 2, please. Flaps 2, speed check. Okay, so the needle should start to move very soon. We are decreasing our speed so we can uh, turn on to final. Distance is now 9.9. .9. Okay, so the needle is moving. Gear down, please. Gear down. And heading 081. Flaps 3. Flaps 3. Flaps speed four. check. Flap 4. Speed check. Okay, so the needle is aligning with the line very nicely. Next altitude 2000 at DME 8.6. On your flight. Next 7, 1500. Six one thousand two hundred. We are high. Yes, we are roughly high. We do the altitude. If go around, flaps two and uh, call for positive rate. Copy. Next five nine hundred. Okay, we have one elevation thousand. on the runway. Landing checklist. Cabin crew. Auto thrust. Speed. Auto brake. Low setting. ECAM memo. Landing no blue. Checklist completed. 500. Minimums. Continue. 400. Two 
hundred, one twenty. Two hundred. Stable. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. Ten. Five. This is it for today. It has been a very long day, but keep posting those comments and we will uh, answer your questions as best as we can. Thank you. Thanks for watching.